Hi guys, this is Keith Galley and today I will be going over the master method to solve recurrences uh, in algorithms and computer science. The master method provides a very simple way to solve recurrences that take the following form. T of n equals some constant a times T of n over b, which is another constant, plus some positive function of n here. So then there's two constraints. There's a constraint on A, and it has to be greater than or equal to 1, and B has to be greater than 1. If we have an algorithm that can be described in the master method recurrence form, then there are three rules we need to use to figure out what the asymptotic runtime of that algorithm is. All three of these rules will make comparisons of the positive function f of n to the function n to the log base b of a. And then some of these rules will include this additional factor of epsilon, where epsilon is a constant that is greater than 0. So rule number one is the case when f of n is less than n log base b of a minus epsilon for all significantly large n's. So in algorithm speak, we can say that f of n is equal to O of n log base b of a minus epsilon for this case. So if this is the, the case, then our recurrence has a runtime that is bounded by theta of n log b of a. So why is that? Well, if f of n is O of n log base b of a minus epsilon, then the n log base b of a, uh, of a is the dominant term. So this part of the recurrence is dominant. As a result, the overall asymptotic runtime is bounded by that term. Next, we'll go over case number two. This is the case where f of n is tightly bounded by n log base b of a. And we actually can drop the epsilon term for this. Then there's one additional factor we have to consider in case two, and that's that there is can be a log k of n factor in addition on this f of n term. So uh, case number two happens whenever f of n is tightly bounded, so theta bounded by n log base b of a times a factor of log to the kth power uh, of n. So in the simplest term, this k is equal to 0, and this whole term goes to 1. Uh, but it's not always that simple, and sometimes we do have an additional uh, factor of log to some power. So this is kind of a more generic way to write it with a log to the k. Um, and then so if this is the case, then our asymptotic runtime is going to be bounded by theta of n log base b of a times log to the k plus 1 n. So it stays the same as like the tight bound, except we have an additional factor of log n. So all we're doing to get our asymptotic runtime in case number two is we're multiplying by an additional factor of log n to give us a final asymptotic runtime of n to the log base b of a times log to the k plus one n. So whatever this k was plus one. Finally we'll cover the last case, case number three. This is the case where f of n is greater or in asymptotic speak is equal to omega of n log base b of a plus epsilon. So it's it's kind of significantly bigger than uh, n log base b of a. In this case, the f of n term here is the dominant term. So our asymptotic runtime is going to be bounded and controlled by that dominant term. So it's going to be theta of f of n. So this is our runtime for case number three. However, before I finish this, I'm going to write this runtime over here real quick. There's one kind of additional factor we need to consider in case number three. So our runtime is theta of f of n. 
So the additional thing we have to cover in case number three is that there's a regularity condition. So we need to check to make sure that the regularity condition is met before we can use this case. So the regularity condition is the following. We need to check that that for the values a and the function of n over b, so this is from above, above, that for some value c times f of n, this c times f of n term is greater than or equal to the a times f of n over b. And uh, in this, uh, this c right here is, needs to be less than 1. So if we can find a c that is less than 1 for some significantly large n, uh, and using the values of a and b that are from up above, then as long as that's met, and it usually is in case 3 conditions, but it's always good to check, then we can use case 3 and say that the uh, recurrence is bounded by f of n. So that's about all there is to the master method. I'm going to make some future videos that kind of go over some examples using it.